Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Ticket. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing five super important tips that you need to tweak, change, or set simply to enhance your experience, your security, and your control over the phone. So let's dive in and get started right away. All right, so the very first one has to do with security. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to your settings, and then what you wanna do is you wanna go into your biometrics and security. You tap on it, and then you go all the way down and you go into other security settings. You tap on this one and there's a very important setting here that a lot of people probably just skim over. Now when you tap on it, what this screen shows you is all the applications that are installed on your smartphone that have administrator level privilege to make modifications on your phone. So what you wanna do is you wanna go inside here and you simply wanna make sure that there's nothing here that looks shady that is enabled just like this one. Now this one is Samsung Pay, that is 100% normal for full functionality. And then again, Find My Device here also is related to a Samsung setting that allows you to find your device even if you lose it. So if I had that set up correctly, this would have been enabled as well, but it's not right now. Not a big deal. What you wanna take a look at is to make sure there's nothing shady in here with full access to your phone. If any app has administrative level privileges to your phone, you're gonna be in trouble. And just to give you one example, if I were to turn this off, it actually shows me what that application is currently able to do on my smartphone. So it can double check with all the applications and also see exactly what they do. And if you don't want them, you simply deactivate them. Now in my case, I use Samsung Pay all the time, so I'm gonna keep that active, so that's gonna be all good to go. All right, now let's move on to the next tactic. The next tactic has to do with your data usage, your mobile data usage, not the Wi-Fi, just the mobile. So this is gonna be very important for people that actually use limited data per month. So some people have unlimited data packages, some people have two gigabytes, five gigabytes, maybe 10 gigabytes. Now this next tactic is gonna allow you to manage that so you never go over your allotted data by your carrier. So let's go up over here. You wanna to go to connections, okay? And then what you wanna do is you wanna go into data usage, okay? And real quick, you do wanna ignore the Wi-Fi data. That, that could be unlimited, no problem. You don't get charged to use Wi-Fi in your home or in your office. But the mobile data is gonna be very important. Here's what you want to do. So let's say your carrier only allows you to use five gigabytes per month and if you go over the five gigabytes, they actually charge you. So what you then wanna do is you wanna come here to billing cycle and data warning. You wanna tap on this option, and first you choose the billing cycle of your bill. So in my case, just as an example, I'm gonna just say on the first of every month, yours could, be, yours could be the fifth of the month, the 15th, whatever you have, it's gonna be on your bill. And then you wanna enable the set data warning, and then you wanna go over here tap on this one and add a warning level. So let's say I'm gonna set four gigabytes for warning. So that means when I use four gigabytes in a given month on my data, I get a warning from my phone saying, hey, you're approaching your five gigabyte limit. You're already at four. And then what you can do is you can enable this guy right over here, and that's gonna set a data limit. That's gonna be a permanent data limit so when you hit the five gigabytes, the phone turn off, turns off the data completely so you're fully protected, but you also get a warning just in case you just wanna calm down for that month. Okay, so that is the billing cycle and data warning. Now when I go back here, you'll see on the top here above the data saver, it says four gigabytes data warning and five gigabytes data limit has been set. Additionally, if you have this option, you can turn this on as well. This is going to limit the background data usage of applications so your data doesn't go to waste in the background where you're not even aware of. But do these things very carefully. And again, remember, if you have an unlimited data plan, none of this matters, but if you have a limit to your data plan, then this is gonna be really nice. Okay, so that's number two. Let's move on to number three. Number three is a very simple feature, but highly useful, and again, a lot of people simply don't know it is there, okay? So let me go to Chrome, and here I have a loan calculator that I'm doing some calculations on, and let's say that I'm using the calculator 
in tandem with this application here on Chrome, and I wanna switch back and forth between two applications super quick. So let me launch the application, the calculator, it's, it was right there actually, okay? So what I can do is you can quickly switch between the last two active applications by simply double tapping the recents key, okay? So uh, maybe I'm doing something here, I'm gonna use an actual calculator, I can double tap, it goes right back to the other application. A really nice way to multitask. Uh, even people that know these things many times forget to actually use them, but these are highly useful productivity enhancing tools you can use all the time if you form a habit. Okay, so that's number three, let's move on to number four. Okay, so number four is gonna be in your settings, and if you go in into your uh, biometrics and security, Again, all the way down under other security settings, it's, it's known as the pin windows option. Now let me disable this for one minute. Let me tap this over here. If I tap over here, you're not gonna see the pin windows option. But if I go back here, enable the pin windows option, let me tap this again. Now if I tap on this one, you'll see a brand new option that says pin this application. Now this is gonna be very useful for people that give their phone away to people all the time or for parents that have kids. So here's what it does. You tap on over here. You, do, you may not need this one. This might be good idea if you're dealing with adults, but if you're dealing with kids, just disable this one, okay? So let me show you what's happening. Let's say uh, you wanna give your kid your phone so they can watch videos on it, but you don't want them to exit the application and go to other places and just mess up your phone without even knowing what they're doing. So that's when you pin the window, okay? Once you pin the window, no matter what they do, they cannot exit this application, okay? As you can see, it doesn't go home, doesn't go to the other application, does not go back. All they can do is watch a movie or do whatever they uh, you want them to do on your phone without messing up your phone. It's great for kids and also great for friends who like to grab your phone and just start looking at stuff you don't want them to look at. Now when you're done with this, when you get your phone back, you press and hold these two buttons at the same time and the app gets unpinned. Now when I go out, I can exit. And again, if you have a kid, you don't have to put a pin number, but if you wanna put a pin number, you can do that as well. So now, if I lock this up, and if my friend who's slick knows how to exit and they try to press and hold, it is going to actually ask them for the uh, pin number. It's gonna lock them out. So that's just, just a little difference, okay? Just so you guys are in fact aware of this. I was putting in the wrong finger. Now let's move on to the final important tactic that you need to know. All right, so the last trick has to do on resetting your phone so it works properly without actually losing your data. So many times when there's something wrong with your phone, a lot of people just tell you to factory reset your phone, which means you're gonna be deleting everything in the phone, you're gonna to have to reset the whole thing up, but before you do that extreme measure, there's a couple simple things you can do just to make sure the problem is not something simple that you're simply not aware of. Maybe you forgot about some setting that you tweaked a couple weeks ago. So what you can do is you can go to settings, okay? Then you go all the way down, then you go into general management. When you're, once you're there, you tap on the reset, okay? And then what you wanna do is you wanna do anything but the factory data reset. This works, it fixes your phone many times, but you lose all your data and you have to restart everything. So first, you can reset your settings, you can reset your network settings if you have connectivity problems, or you can reset your accessibility settings, or, you can reset all three to see if your problem gets fixed. Every single one of these features will reset the corresponding settings to factory default, which is great. And many times when my friends come to me and they have a problem, this is what I do and it fixes their phone, no problem. So make sure you do not do this. This is an extreme option. It erases everything. It does fix a lot of problems, but also creates problems due to losing data. Okay, so those were the five things for today that you should change or tweak or enable or activate simply to enhance your Samsung experience. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below, let me know. Also, there's a playlist down below to even more settings you guys need to be aware of. So if you wanna watch more of these videos, click the playlist down below. 
and explore all the other features of your phone and become a master of it. All right, guys, have a fantastic day, all right? All right, so if you found this video useful, make sure to subscribe to Saki Tech by clicking that button and also click that bell icon on the side to make sure you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you do use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, you can follow me at Saki Tech Online to get the latest updates as well. All right, have a fantastic day.